Well, here we go again. My name is Brian Trippett. I am your front porch conservative. Step on up to my electronic front porch and let's talk. By now, you have no doubt heard about the latest set of indictments that have been brought against former President Donald J. Trump. Late Tuesday afternoon on August the 1st, Special Prosecutor Jack Smith, who's handling not only the Mar-a-Lago documents case, but also the prosecution of matters related to January 6th, announced to Trump's attorneys that indictments were being brought against the former president. So I want to take a few moments in this video to talk about two aspects of this story. Number one is the legal aspect, and the other aspect is the political. Let's start first with what Trump is being charged with. So we'll go to the UK Daily Mail. Headline, Donald Trump indicted for the third time. Ex-president hit with four charges, including conspiracy to defraud the government and obstruct the electoral count for trying to overturn the 2020 election. Article written by a combination of writers, Rob Crilly, senior U.S. political reporter for Daily Mail, Kelly Lacko, executive editor for Politics of Daily Mail, and Jeff Earl, deputy U.S. political editor for Daily Mail. The three of them write the following. Former President Donald Trump was hit with federal criminal charges over his attempts to cling to power after losing the 2020 election, with a grand jury indictment accusing him of spreading, quote, lies and, quote, sham investigations while stoking a, quote, angry mob on January the 6th. Trump is facing four counts, including conspiracy to defraud the U.S. government and obstruct the electoral count for trying to overturn the 2020 election. The 45-page indictment says he was, quote, determined to remain in power despite having lost. Hmm, funny. I didn't realize that politicians could be found guilty of trying to remain in power, but I digress. Special counsel Jack Smith said in a televised public statement following the release of the indictment that the attack on the Capitol was, quote, fueled by lies made by Trump, quote, targeting and obstructing the bedrock function of the U.S. government, the nation's process of collecting, counting, and certifying the results of the presidential election. He pledged that his office will conduct a speedy trial. The former president, who is facing a maximum of 55 years in prison on the four counts, has been summoned to appear before U.S. District Judge Tanya Schutkin, an Obama appointee, on Thursday in Washington, D.C. There are also six unnamed alleged co-conspirators, according to the indictment. Okay, let's get into this. Ah, oh, jeez. It's been coming for a while. Everybody has known about this from the start. Everybody has heard about it. Everybody's realized that this was probably going to happen. As a matter of fact, Trump's lawyers met with Jack Smith probably a week or 10 days ago in Washington, D.C., and they tried to talk him out of doing this, which you would expect as they advocate on behalf of their client. Now, the four charges specifically are uh, conspiracy to defraud, conspiracy to obstruct an official proceeding, obstruction of an attempt to obstruct an official proceeding, and conspiracy against rights. Now, if those sound fairly vague, you're absolutely right. They are fairly vague. And reaction to this set of indictments that have been brought down has been fast and hard by people who are for Donald Trump and even people who are not even for necessarily Donald Trump. We'll start first with the reactions. We'll go to Robert Barnes, a constitutional attorney and well-renowned pro-Trump uh, advocate. From a factual perspective, the Trump indictment is garbage as it falsely alleges that no one involved believed any claim they made about the election when they, in fact, know Trump absolutely believed every single statement he made. Oh yeah, and many of his claims proved true. Translation, in simpler language, 
um, that Donald Trump, you know, didn't believe anything he was saying about the election being rigged. They didn't believe anything about, you know, there being voter fraud or the fact that this needs to be examined or looked at. They never believed any of that at all. Rather remarkable. Now, Barnes goes on to make one more comment, which I think is just very telling, and I'll explain why here in a second after we read it. Barnes also says, to be clear, Biden DOJ indicted Trump for what the Senate already acquitted him of. Now, if you're wondering what Robert Barnes is referring to, may I remind you of the second impeachment of Donald Trump? Yes, most people tend to overlook this, but there was a second impeachment after Trump was already out of office. And as a reminder of what it was he was impeached for, we go to Wikipedia. Second paragraph in, the House of Representatives of the 117th U.S. Congress adopted one article of impeachment against Trump on incitement of insurrection, stating that he had incited the January attack of the U.S. Capitol. These attempts were preceded by Trump. Now, watch this, watch this. These attempts were preceded by, these events were preceded by attempts by Trump to overturn the 2020 election, as well as his pushing of voter fraud conspiracy theories on his social media channels before, during, and after the election. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, Robert Barnes brings up a perfectly valid point. The, ar the one article of impeachment accuses Trump of inciting the riot at the U.S. Capitol on January 6th. But it also says, as part of that, that he was pushing voter fraud conspiracy theories before, during, and after. In other words, he was saying, hey, I think this election is rigged. Hey, I think there was voter fraud. Hey, I think this needs to be examined. And what happened in this impeachment? Yes, the House impeached him. It went over the Senate, and he was not convicted. Basically, a trial was held, and guess what? The jury that would have convicted him, the members of the United States Senate, did not find that he was guilty of that for which he was impeached. So the point becomes, if that's the case, why, after two and a half years, might I add, why, after two and a half years, are we doing this all over again? Makes absolutely no sense. But Barnes is not the only critic of this entire four indictment count been brought down by a grand jury in Washington, D.C. We go, as always, to the inestimable to tell Jonathan Turley. Ladies and gentlemen, listen to his take on this whole thing. You, I am uh, really quite astonished by much of this indictment so far. Uh, it regurgitates a lot of the allegations against Trump, and there is room for criticism uh, in terms of the claims being made about stolen elections. Uh, but it's criminalizing all of that. You know, it, it states in the indictment the president spent months spreading false rumors and allegations of election irregularities. Really, is that a criminal issue? I mean, is that is that the basis of this conspiracy? Uh, it seems to me rather uh, loose at the joints. Well, now keep in mind, Jonathan Turley is no fan of Donald Trump politically, but he brings up a perfectly valid point. R should this speech not fall under First Amendment protections? Well, he didn't make that point as strongly or as clearly as I thought, but let me show you somebody who does. Rudy Giuliani was interviewed tonight by Eric Bowling. Listen specifically to what he says about this. ...ones, actually. And uh, it seems like it's not even an indictment. I'm not sure I know what the crime is. I mean, I know these crimes. These are very, very vague crimes. Supreme Court has criticized most of them for being too vague. It charges, actually, Donald Trump with exercising his right of free speech. I mean, it's, it's, this is a historic and very, very sad indictment because it's probably one of the biggest attacks the United States government has made on free speech in our very, very long and illustrious history. Okay, regardless of what you think of Giuliani personally, his point is valid and extraordinarily powerful. In order for this indictment to hold up, you're going to have to say Donald Trump does not have the right 
to speak out against something that he finds to be wrong. In other words, he doesn't have the right to freedom of speech. Doesn't matter if he's the president of the United States. Doesn't matter if he's the common janitor or anywhere in between. You have to suspend that because, no, you can't challenge an election. And one more point on the legal issues about all this by Joel Pollack, himself not necessarily a lawyer, but he does bring up something that ought to be considered. From his Twitter page, the January 6th indictment against Trump relies on mind reading. Quote, these claims were false and the defendant knew they were false. Really? It's the weakest of the federal indictments, maybe even weaker than Alvin Bragg's junk indictment regarding Stormy Daniels. And Pollock's point is completely true. In order for this to stick, number one, you've got to say that Donald Trump doesn't have the right to freedom of speech. But number two, and more importantly, you absolutely have to be able to have read his mind to know completely and absolutely beyond the shadow of a doubt that he believed that everything he was saying was false. How are you going to do that? That makes absolutely no sense whatsoever. This indictment is a piece of crap on any number of different levels. This is throw spaghetti against the wall and hope it sticks. That's the legal equivalent of what this is like. Okay, that's the legal side of this. Let's get to the political. Oh, man, there is so much to say about this. I want to start first uh, with a clip from the Jesse Waters show. Ladies and gentlemen, take a listen to this, because I don't even think I even need to set this up, really. The timing of this indictment was coordinated to take the heat off Biden. This is the third time this has happened. You ready? On March 17th, Hunter admitted the laptop was his. And on the very next day, Trump received word Alvin Bragg was indicting him in New York. On June 8th, an FBI document broke that Ukraine paid Biden a $5 million bribe. And the next day on June 9th, Biden's DOJ indicts Trump on the Mar-a-Lago documents. Yesterday, on July 31st, a Biden insider told Congress that Biden spoke with Hunter Biden's business partners dozens of times. And Hunter was paid handsomely to get his dad to fire the prosecutor in Ukraine. And then today, August 1st, Biden's Justice Department indicts Trump on January 6th charges. The time. Okay. For those of you out there who don't necessarily follow the news or politics that that much, particularly politics, first of all, congratulations. I'm very happy for you. You're doing so much better than an old weirdo like me that follows this stuff with almost obsessive glee. But I have a question for those of you who are not necessarily big newsy people or necessarily even political. Um... Jesse Waters is right. This is the third time this has happened. In other words, a piece of very damaging news comes out about Hunter and or Joe Biden, and the next day, charges come up against Donald Trump, or he's indicted, or something bad happens that seems to take all the attention away from that news about Hunter and Joe. Now, once you could say, eh, all right, twice? Okay, a third time? Come on, folks. You cannot sit there and not tell me that you don't see this for what it is. This is pure politics. This isn't even about law enforcement. This isn't about justice. This is about the regime taking the heat off Joe and Hunter. And if you don't believe me on that point, take a look at this. This is from The Hill about a month ago. Headline, nearly half in new polls say Trump indictment is politically motivated. This was after the Mar-a-Lago indictment came down. Almost half of Americans in a new poll said they believe the federal indictment of former President Donald Trump is politically motivated after he was charged with 37 counts in relation to the alleged mishandling of records at his Mar-a-Lago estate. 47% of respondents in the ABC News Ipsos poll released Sunday say the charges against Trump are politically motivated, while 37% say they are not, 16% say they are not sure. Well, I got bad news for the Biden regime. Uh, that 16% that aren't sure after this stunt that you guys just pulled, 
that number is going to shrink significantly and it's just going to add on to the total of people who see this for what it is. This is nothing more than blatant, brazen politics. This is weaponizing the Justice Department against your political enemy. And by the way, for those of you, uh, you know, milk toast, you know, go along to get along Republicans out there think, well, hey, they're doing it to Trump because he's a bad guy. They won't do that to us. Oh, you are crazier than a bed bug. They'll not only do it to Trump, they'll do it to you. The argument that says, well, we just got to make sure that Trump's not the nominee and, and, and the Democrats will be nicer to us. Oh, no, they won't. They will try to steamroll you just as hard as they're trying to steamroll Trump. And the American people can see it exactly for what it is. But let's move on to some other reaction to this, which is very important. Now, people have said all along that there's a counterintuitive thing that's happening every time one of these indictments comes down against Trump. It works to his benefit. Who best to sum that up but the legendary Roger Stone? I want you to hear a snippet from an interview that he gave to Chrissy Mayer tonight on her podcast. Listen to this. Uh, the irony of this is it's totally counterintuitive. Every time they charge him, he raises $10 million more. He goes up another 10 points in the polls. It's the exact opposite of what they have planned. It's the exact opposite of what you might reasonably expect. And Stone is absolutely right. Um, you know, I think I'm going to start a betting pool on uh, the next time that a piece of news comes out about the Bidens is how many hours and or days will it take for uh, another indictment to come down against Donald Trump? I think I'm going to add to that betting pool. How many points will he go up in the polls and how much money will he raise off of the new indictment? Because that's exactly what's going to happen. And if you're wondering why it is he goes up in the polls, let me show you a quote from Rogan O'Hanley. This sums up a lot of people's reaction to why it is they're supporting Donald Trump. And I think this is just amazing. Ladies and gentlemen, listen to this. I want President Trump to go in there for a few reasons. One, he knows where all the bodies are buried. He knows all the players. He knows how all the buttons and all the joysticks work. And now he's really, really pissed off. That's who I want. I want the guy with the most impeachments, the most indictments, the most investigations, because that is who the deep state fears the most. And the deep state is the biggest threat to the American people that exists right now. It's not Russia. It's not China. It is the bureaucracy in D.C. Ladies and gentlemen, Rogan O'Hanley's statement is exactly how most Republicans and independents are viewing what's going on. Even if you're not necessarily a person that's given to following politics on a regular basis. Regardless of what you think of Donald Trump, like him, don't like him, neutral on him, whatever. When the average person sees how badly the Justice Department and the bureaucracy in Washington, D.C. are beating up on, a, on not only an ex-president, but a citizen of the United States. It tends to make people sympathetic to him. It tends to rally people to him. And it's going to make Trump stronger in the court of public opinion. So I would like to congratulate Jack Smith. I want to congratulate the Attorney General Merrick Garland. I want to congratulate Joe Biden, because don't tell me that Joe Biden's not behind this in one form or another. Congratulations, fellas. You've made him stronger even still. If you think the polls right now that show Trump and Biden neck and neck in a 2024 election matchup are bad, keep doing what you're doing. Because I guarantee you, at the rate you're going, Trump will win 2024 in a Ronald Reagan-style landslide. But that's what I think about it. What do you think? As we start to wrap up this video, please do me some favors as always. Number one, if you're not a subscriber to this channel, 
please do so. Number two, please leave a comment below. It really helps me out. Number three, please give me a thumbs up on the video. Number four, share it around. Number five, please hit the bell for notifications. I want to make sure you're always aware when new material is coming out. My name is Brian Trippett. I am your front porch conservative, and I'll see you next time.